Hello. Um, my name is Ada Soko, and I'm an artist and 3D designer. Born and raised in Poland, but I have been living in London, Paris, and Stockholm throughout my 20s. Now, my life circled back to where it all began. I came back to my roots and relocated to Warsaw. My style developed during collaborations with brands such as Nike, Apple, Louis Vuitton, Valentino, and Barberi on global campaigns, video, and multimedia installations. My works have been showcased uh, during art shows, festivals, and exhibitions from Beijing, New York, and Los Angeles to London and, or Paris. Last year, I also had uh, my debut as an academic lecturer at Swiss Ecole. A few years ago, I discovered Ada Lovelace. She is known as the first computer programmer and female scientist in times where women were discriminated against in this field. As you might imagine, as my namesake and a female working with computers, she inspired me a lot. And not only me, but also numerous others that she influenced. Ada Computer Language, Ada Lovelace Award initiated by Association for Women in Computing, Ada Lovelace Day celebrating the achievements of women in science, technology, mathematics, engineering, etc. Et There's also a crypto platform, Cardano, that called their currency ADA, and Lovelace is the smallest subunit of an ADA. And ADA Lovelace used to talk about everything being interconnected and related. So, Today, I will try to explain the mysterious connection between myself and Blender. When I started my artistic career, uh, I mostly drew and worked with 2D, 2D graphics. In the beginning, uh, I made several uh, illustrations for newspapers, articles, and posters. To this day, I still love drawing, uh, which is an essential part of the process and the concept design. In, 2000, uh, in 2015, I was commissioned to develop the visual promotion for one of the exhibitions, Private Settings, at the Museum of Modern Arts in Warsaw. The exhibition uh, included all my favorite post-digital artists, whom I had admired for years. It, it was the first time they've been all gathering in Poland, so I was motivated to create something completely progressive and new for that occasion. While exploring all the possibilities, I called my father. He's one of the first uh, He's one of the first three designers in Poland. In the 90s, he started to create architectural visualizations, the ones you can see on screen. And please remember, it was 90s. Um, he recommended an easy and open source uh, software that I could learn fast to complete the project within the deadline. And that was Blender. I realized that I had an advantage of growing up with exposure to specific 3D software language, so I was not too intimidated by it. At the same time, I was fascinated with exploring the tendency of art to comment and reveal uh, the impact of commercialism on our daily life. As for the final effect of my first 3D commission, well, <laughs> you can say it for yourself. Anyway, that was the starting point of my 3D career.
someone on Facebook noticed this poster and started to and I started to receive more and more 3D related commissions. I noticed that working with 3D is something that gives me a massive amount of joy and fulfillment. And I ended up doing things like this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And also this. It's been seven years since, and I keep on constantly challenging myself with my work. Last month, my video for Prada uh, was published. Working for them was a long time dream of mine, and honestly, I still cannot believe it came true. Thank you. And this project caught the eye of somebody working directly with Blender. I guess that might be one of the reasons why I was invited to this conference. So, thank you, Matt. <laughs> And since I have a great honor to speak in front of you, I would like to tell you a little about how I approach my projects and what I find important at every step of my pipeline. Everything around us is complex and inspiring. I tend to find beauty in unassuming things the mechanical and, mecha uh, and natural realms are both valuable to me. Fauna and flora are the best visual stimulus and computers allow us to play with it um, in the distinctive way. I try to constantly educate myself on environmental issues and learn about the nature. It's fascinating how far more complex uh, some organisms can be compared to the man-made machines. On the other hand, we don't always appreciate how wonderful nature can be. That's why I often put, the, put it as a main hero at my, in my works. Sensual, photorealistic and delicate. This statement anchors my creative approach. Typically, these three values are combined to speak about unique visual language that's both eccentric and beautiful. So that is always a first step, to find something genuinely inspiring and build a concept around it. Most of my designs come from a place of vulnerability. One's unique perspective can guide the viewer and allow them to understand my work's intention and symbolic layer. I always try to sneak in a little bit of personal perspective and a deeper meaning into everything I do. I usually prepare my concepts even if, before I open Blender software. I collect all elements of the scene and the visual references into mood boards. It might seem obsessive and counterintuitive to artistic expression, but I find it crucial in my process. Even if I decide to make some changes later, I approach every new project with a precise step-by-step -step plan. It helps tremendously. I trust my instincts and usually the first idea works. Most of us tend to let our minds drift off and dwell on the endless improvements to the project or, let's be honest, simply get lost on the internet. 
this year I mentored an intern, a student from Swiss Ecal, where I had uh, the opportunity to teach last October. Shirobeta is a talented artist and quickly picked up knowledge during those workshops. So I invited him to create a project under my supervision. Even though the final visuals came out nice, we had many, many delays. And in the last few days, uh, we had to work until early morning hours to complete the, the project within the deadline. And this situation reminded me of the importance of keeping yourself accountable and following the plan. It's honestly so much easier. As I mentioned, most of my projects begin with the concept on the paper. But obviously, then it needs to be translated into the 3D realm. At first, I did absolutely everything on my own. But now I don't hesitate to delegate work to other people or adjust models I bought online. My style can be characterized as hyperrealism. I strive to mimic the textures of objects I portray. It's a crucial step uh, evoking the feeling of uncanny and mystery. Especially when the objects or creatures shown are fictional. If the textures are off, the whole design will seem unbelievable and fake. And I try to find balance and recreate the oh. <laughs> and recreate materials and textures as close as possible, but leave the leeway for some magical twist within it. A color accent or a detail in roughness can elevate the way your objects will look. In a, final, uh, in a final frame. As I always say, for me, nature is the best designer, and I, to tr I try to derive from its genius. It might be on the verge of obsession, but I religiously watch and read about the captivating secrets of fauna and flora. When I use reference photos, I rarely do not like the outcome, even if the inspiration might seem risky. In nature, color has its function, and we react to it on a subliminal level. Trusting your gut feeling it works wonders. If you believe it will look good, it usually does. Of course, nature is not the only inspiration. Humanity has uh, been creating its own color codes, and throughout the centuries, we have created a flatora of beautiful things and spaces that serves as excellent references. And when I build the scene, I try to keep the rules of composition in mind. It just works. Following those guidelines results in a visually pleasing image. I work hard to create stunning designs, and I don't want them to be overshadowed by a wonky composition. There is a time and place to challenge the beaten path, but it should not be accidental. Creating a mood is also vital for the viewer to be immersed into the art. By the intended use of lighting in the scene, we can evoke certain feelings and manipulate the viewer's perception. It's similar to a camera setup. Choosing a specific angle allows you to express precisely what you intended. Animating is truly an enchanting part of the process. It is a step when you can see all the visuals come to life. 
Once again, I strive to make it as accurate as possible. I use a lot of video references to try to capture the essence of what I portray. I built my own computer from scratch to ensure that all the heavily, heavy processes go flawlessly. Even though I have this powerful tool, I still decided to use Render Farm, Render Street, <laughs> to be true, for most of my projects. The amount of work and usually very short deadlines require me to outsource um, this time and energy consuming stage. I assume that it's the same for most of you here. At some point, it's unavoidable. I only wish that there would be some environmentally friendly options available, but hopefully in the future. The post-production stage gives plenty of opportunities to elevate your work and give it character. I usually keep it minimal, putting uh, the rendered frames together and adding sound on the top of videos if needed. From time to time, I collaborate with musicians who reach out to me or combine nature sounds um, that I find interesting. And managing the pipeline isn't easy. For most of my career, I worked alone and had to handle every little aspect of the production. Though it was challenging at times, I learned how to control the seemingly chaotic stages to make magic happen. I'm more than content with where my career is at the moment. I have copious amounts of wonderful projects in my portfolio. And even though I still feel the need to learn more of the technical side of Blender, I decided to open Adasoku Art Lab, a design studio where I can gather like-minded people and create even more breathtaking visuals. I can't wait what the future brings. If it weren't for Blender, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. Just like the software itself was growing and changing over time, giving more and more possibilities. Parallelly, I was growing as an artist and constantly updating my skill set. Obviously, if you are here today, you probably more or less uh, know how great it is. But if you are just at the beginning of your 3D journey, from the bottom of my heart, I can't recommend Blender enough. Thank you.